Hey Game Reactor friends, uh, we are at the Xbox Showcase event here at E3 2016 and we're catching up with Keiji Nafune on ReCore. Thank you for joining us. Hi, thank you. So, what are you showing here at E3 about ReCore this year? So this is the first time that players and the media are going to be able to see gameplay footage from ReCore and no one has ever actually touched the game outside of the dev team until today so we're really excited to be able to share how the game feels with everyone around the world. We've seen several abilities and several ways you can play depending on your style. Uh, how does that work exactly? So while it might look like a very standard TPS when you first pick up the controller, there's a lot of elements that we've integrated into the game that really gives it much more depth and different ways to play. For example, there are a variety of robots that you can play with that kind of change the way you solve puzzles or change the way you interact with a certain stage. And I think that really gives it that very recordness. It's a unique sort of mechanic and system to record, the ability to do different things different ways. And of course, there's some platforming, exploration, and puzzle solving, as you mentioned. How is the balance between those uh, mechanics in the game? So we've tuned it in such a way that we really want people to be immersed in this world. We put a lot of emphasis and effort into developing this world and creating an amazing world setting. So a lot of the elements, the exploration part, is definitely really important, but the combat is another way in which people can immerse themselves in the world. And we really just want to take a variety of ways in which people can kind of really feel like they're part of in this world. And now that you mentioned the setting, what else can you tell us about the story and the main characters? So a lot of the development of the character and the game has to do with our main character, Jewel. And she has, she's the only surviving human, or that's what it seems like, and there are a lot of robots around her, surrounding her. And the part of what the player must do is kind of solve the mystery of why she's the only human on this planet and why there are certain robots that help her and why there are certain robots that are against her. So it's really kind of a very, like, discovering process that people have to do, a lot of mystery element to it as well. I'm personally a fan of the Metroid Prime series. You've got some developers from the original team with you. What do you think they added to the project? The concept really focused on the, the world setting, the characters, the development, and sort of the elements that drive the narrative. Whereas uh, the Metroid Prime, the former Metroid Prime team, focused heavily on the mechanics of the game as well as sort of the system, the development, the kind of things that go on the back end to make sure the game is tuned, the game is developed and very balanced. So I think we really had our roles clearly defined where we're on the story, they're on a lot of the development and mechanical side. And putting these two elements together really created a very unique and healthy synergy between our two, our two organizations. And of course the game is part of the new program which puts the game both on Xbox One and PC. Uh, how was that for you as a development task or a challenge? I would say the biggest challenge was the race against time. We announced this last year at E3, so we had one year and some change until September uh, when the game's going to be released. And to also develop that on Windows 10 and Xbox One at the same time with that one year and change deadline has been the biggest challenge, I would say, for uh, the development team. How are you taking advantage of the new features found in the Xbox S? So, as you know, all the Xbox Ones are compatible with each other. Which of the three you take, the Xbox One, the Xbox One S, and the new one that they announced this year. So, we really want to keep that baseline and make sure everyone can have access to it and have the full experience. And we haven't really put a huge emphasis on differentiating it too much between platforms and optimizing it. Okay, game is launching on September 13, if I'm correct which is the main feature uh, fans should be looking forward to. But the key word that you're looking for is immersion. And I think that's a big key word that we've been uh, using in development. And kind of making sure the users and the consumers get immersed in our world has been a huge driving point. And we always go back to the drawing board and think about how are we going to pull the person into our world more and more. So it's not simply about playing the game. It's not simply about just enjoying the mechanics. It's about feeling that emotional tug that you get when you are immersed inside of our world. So that's what we definitely want people to enjoy. Okay, looking forward to get immersed into Recall. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Arigato Hi, arigato.
Welcome back, buddy.